The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly, so let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Friday, July 20th, and so happy for you joining us, and we are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. Today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have Until the End with Daniel Baker, the Wednesday Message Word Study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. Day. All right, everyone, how are you doing? Yes, it is Friday. It's the tail of the week, and I'm just so thankful, grateful we made it this far. Guys, can you believe it? It's like the 20, oh, it's the 21st, not even the 20th, it's the 21st, right? So that's my mistake. It is the 21st of July. We only have nine days left until August is upon us, and guys, that is crazy. I'm straight up like it's this month is going by so fast and I am super thankful that we can uh, like we can go through this fast year together on the Morning Star Drive. Uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead, leave a like and comment to build our community. I'm just happy for everyone joining us every week in the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. Yes, this week's Sunday message is God who makes the right history at the right time. And we will go over the Wednesday message on the last segment today. Woo! Super excited. Super exciting weekend. Last week, I had the beach barbecue. This week, uh, oh, tomorrow, I'm going to go watch Oppenheimer. And uh, our church, like a bunch of people from church are going to go watch that. So I am super excited and happy about that one too. Um, Funny thing. Uh, You know, (laughs) the funniest thing is someone in the comments actually said we went through our Oppenheimer in March. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because those of you guys don't know, Oppenheimer is a real figure in history in America. And he is the one that created the atomic bomb. Uh, and it's 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 like a perfect reference to what happened in March. We had our March atomic bomb with like, what, what was it? Like Netflix and then the leaders meeting with AJ and stuff like that too. So man, like we had our atomic bomb and we're still kind of feeling the effects right now. But here's the thing that's kind of interesting. Doesn't it feel like March was so far away? Like it feels like it was last year. Like that's how like... It feels that long ago. That was only four months ago. It was only four months, but it feels like a year ago. And we're just, you know, like we've already overcome it. We're all dealing with it uh, the best way that we can. It's so weird uh, that time goes by so differently. And I'm sure for some of you guys, it may not feel like a year. It may not, it may feel like yesterday for some of you. But for me, it really feels like it was a year ago. Just so many things are going on all the time, and I am just like, wow, time just flies by so quickly. And it kind of reminds me of what Sunsim said um, maybe like 15, 20 years ago. He might, he might have said it a couple more times in between. But he said, human beings forget easily. Like, we just forget. And it's a good and a bad thing, because if we forget easily, that means we forget even the good things we're supposed to remember, but the great thing is the things that are not so good, we kind of, uh, you know, we, we, we don't remember them as well or we don't feel them. As, like we remember it, but we just don't feel it like we did before. And, you know, that's kind of why, uh, you know, we're always being reminded of the word, right? Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, the Sunsim says the most is do things until the end. And why does Sunsim need to keep saying do things until the end? It's because people don't do things until the end. People do quit in the middle. People do stop, you know, they just stop things, they quit, and they don't end up finishing what they completed. And this is why the word always says do things until the end, which the most important part is our faith, obviously, right? Do it until the end. So, yeah, it's 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 quite interesting just to kind of reflect back on what's happened over the last four months. But we have gone through a lot, and I am so proud of myself and proud of everyone here in the Morning Star Drive and all the churches around the world because everyone's doing uh, an amazing job. Actually, I was talking to a head leader in Korea yesterday, and this is someone uh, a little bit younger than me, head leading in a small church. Uh, They're amazing. The reason why I know this person so well is because we were on the same vol. I was a volleyball coach for the Lord's Church way back in the past. I did that for like three, four years. And, you know, we won so many championships, but uh, 
this is a, a, a head leader. She's really athletic. She's super tall, everything else. And she is amazing. Okay. So as we're talking, uh, I can totally see the difference in uh, like the different cultures and countries. We're all different, right? And the one thing that hit me was, uh, well, this person said to me, like, I was talking to them like, oh, you know, I gotta, I'm, I'm looking to find a new mission right now. I want to find something new that I want to do for this history. And what she says is, yeah, it's so true. You know, now is a time we really have to run even more than before, especially at this time. And it's very interesting because it's totally, it's a totally different mentality. It's totally different because if you think about it, yes, all the countries got hard, hit pretty hard, but Korea is the place that was hit the hardest, wasn't it? It was hit so hard. We went like Korea went through the most difficult time, all the pu public outrage. You have the court trials. You have everything going on over there. And out of all the countries, they are the ones with this crazy extreme mentality. Like they have to do even more now kind of thing. And it's so different than what I, when I hear other countries talk about. I'm not saying other countries are weaker or they're worse. It's just different. It's very extreme in Korea. And, you know, we, we know because, you know, there's negative points of being very extreme also because there's going to be very extreme negative points too. But it was for me, I was just like, man, highly, much respect to uh, Korea. And uh, just to see that they have that strong mentality to fight even through the most difficult time. And they're doing such an awesome job too. I'm still uh, really, really uh, proud of Providence in Korea for the peaceful protests that they're doing too. And you know, they're, uh, some of the people were out, the 300 people were out there doing a, a peaceful protest. Some of them would have masks, but they're going to be on TV and on YouTube and they're without masks. They're just going out showing their faces too. And I thought that was uh, that was really brave of them also to do that too, especially in a climate like that. So yeah, it's 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 quite interesting to see how everything is developing and how strong Korea is, even though they're being, being hit the hardest. And I think that's something that we can learn uh, also from, you know, at a personal and church or at an organizational level also. But yeah, well, you know, let's go into something a little bit more important, Okay. Uh, I started watching this K-drama called King the Land on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, this is this is way more important than what I just talked about, right? <laughs> on to some more important news. I started watching this K-drama called King the Land on Netflix. I'm not sure if you guys have uh, uh, seen this or not. For me, it's quite funny because uh, it's, it's something that my parents are watching. And I, you know, when they're watching it on TV and I'm just like, you know, I'm while I'm eating, I'm watching, watching some of it, but they are watching and they're like way ahead. They're like on episode like 10, 11, 12, whatever it is, right? They're at, they're, they're at the most recent one where I am, uh, you know, I'm just like, man, why are they watching this so much? So it kind of got me like curious and I started watching it. And for me, it's, it's like, you can see this. This common like theme in this show, right? Because it's like a romantic comedy kind of thing, right? And it's like so many scenes where just such a menial thing happens, like something so small. And then all of a sudden, like they look at each other, everything kicks into slow motion romantic music comes on and it's just like focused on their face right and you just see that person's face and it slow motion goes into a smile and of course the girl's really pretty the guy is super handsome whatever it is but it happens like too much right it's like oh they're putting out the garbage and then hands touch and then slow motion kicks in and then the music plays and then they stare at each other for like 30 seconds like, how uncomfortable is that? But it's like slow motion, 30 seconds, and it's kind of like, what is going on? And of course, the first time it happened, I was like, ooh, this is the first spark. They're starting to fall in love. But then it happens like every three minutes, right? Like, the first time it focuses on the guy's face for 30 seconds, and the next time it focuses on the girl's face for 30 seconds, and then the next scene, like, such small things happen. Small things. She trips over and he catches her. And then they look at each other and then 
slow motion, and the music starts, right? Like, you know, it, it was like, it kind of like corny, but they just do it in a good, like they do it in a very, uh, they, it's produced really well. She walks by him and her hair hits him and then slow motion starts and the slow motion begins and music starts. It's like totally overkill. Like I want to make a parody where the girl drops something, she bends over to pick it up, she farts and the guy's right behind her and then she looks back at him, slow motion starts, <laughs> slow motion and then the music starts. Like I want to, it was so overkill. But here's the thing that's kind of crazy. Even though it's overkill, I can't stop watching it. You know what I mean? I'm just like, oh, oh, like you're waiting for the next moment. It kicks into slow motion and the music starts. And it's it's interesting because it's this love story, right? It was kind of it's kind of like a Cinderella story kind of thing. And uh, for me, I looked at it as like, oh, people, yeah, it's this is something that people are attracted to, but I find it to be quite. Uh, of course, it's so unrealistic, like so unrealistic. Because this guy is a chebol, which means like the son of this great conglomerate that has like billions and billions of dollars. And he's basically money is no problem for him. So he can just totally do romantic stuff because he's got all that money. Right. And I think people when people watch this type of thing, they kind of expect their love life to be like this when the reality is is, you know, people don't look like that, <laughs> right? Like these Netflix channels, you don't look like that. No one looks like that, right? It's, it's not, and you're not going to have two people that are that good looking going to come together and have this perfect marriage. Like when you look at like these superstars, they all get divorced and stuff, but it kind of gives these people like this unrealistic expectation where it's like they don't have morning head. They don't have like... uh you know, morning face when they're just so tired and exhausted and you look at them in the morning and you're like, ah, like, who is that? Is that my wife? Kind of thing. You know, it's like, it doesn't show that. Like, even when, like, when I watch some of these, uh, some of these scenes, they're like just waking up in the morning and they wake up with like the perfect face and perfect hair. Do you know what I mean? It is so unrealistic, but of course it's a TV show. But I looked at it like, wow, I, I wonder if people are expecting this in their relationships. You know what I mean? So I looked at that and I was like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Like, it's so unrealistic. It's so, like, over the top. But yet, I'm just like, ooh, ooh, oh, they're in love. Like, you know, you're kind of just like, yeah, it's so weird. Like, the, which just shows me they've got it down to a science. They know exactly what people want. And it's very, very different from the K-dramas I've seen in the past because the K-dramas in the past have more drama than the dramas I see, like the ones that I've watched recently. It's not as much drama. Like there's not like, oh my God, and he's cheating. Oh, and this, and oh, and that. No, it's like very, very lighthearted stuff. It's not like, you know, something's going to be destroyed or I hate you now and then I love you the next moment. It's totally not like that. I think it's because it's this new generation that's growing up that's way too sensitive and they don't want to see too many swings because it's nothing like it was before. So yeah, that's just that that was just quite interesting just to kind of see how much even K-dramas have changed. Like I don't really watch a lot, but I saw, I was watching this one because my parents were watching it. You know, I'm just making an excuse why... I watched it, but yeah, it, it's quite interesting. I, I'm i very obsessive in certain things, so I'm probably going to finish this whole thing over the weekend just because I need to get it done. I need to, you know, I'm someone, once I get into something, I'm really into it. Like, you know, like I told you last week with the car wash or when I get into something, I'll buy all the products and then I'll get into it. I'm very obsessive in that way, so I'll probably just finish off everything this weekend just so I don't have to watch it anymore or think about it, right? But... Yeah, interesting, interesting, but uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, something I thought was quite funny at the same time. Oh, by the way, because some people are asking me and such about uh, what I talked about yesterday about the Star Department. Can I reiterate myself on this? I do. I, I'm not saying the Star Department is bad. I do. I do believe the Star Department is necessary. It is part of God's will. I am not against it. I was just saying I'm more against the method in which people were trying to make more stars, like kind of force it in, right? So, uh, you know, it felt more like we were making stars more than allowing God to choose them and people making their own choice and decision too. 
right? So that, that that's kind of what I wanted to reiterate myself. Is like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, it's nothing against, I am a star, right? So it's got nothing to do with me saying the star department is bad. I'm just like, I didn't like that culture where they're kind of pushing people towards that direction, right? Oh, I had this like, ugh, you know, yesterday's uh, Wednesday message. Well, for me, it was yesterday. It was about pre-dawn, pre-dawn, pre-dawn. I missed pre-dawn this morning because I was up on the phone until like 2 a.m. And I prayed before I slept instead. But it was just, I just great conversation because I talked to people from all around the world. And I had a talk with a member last night. And interesting conversation. And there's a bunch of different things that came up. And the first, the first uh, part of the conversation was about lecturing. And uh, this person was saying, you know, I listen to your lectures. It's very different than other people. It's more practical. It's more inspiring, motivational, and stuff like that too. Like how do you come up with these points? And because um, like this person was, is more of a beginner in lecturing and, they, and this person was talking about how they are more about, you know, making sure they get the points across. But then they were saying like, oh, but your lectures get the points across, but it's more memorable because it's either funny or like it's inspiring or motivational. Like there's this point there that I really, really like and I'll take those points and I'll share it with other people too. And um, it's been such a long, it's been four years since I've actually lectured. I've been doing more podcasts and helping people how to lecture, but I was sharing with them how I come up with my, uh, like those stories or inspirational points. And for me, where I come up with my lectures and my introductions and stuff like that is through my realizations. Like it's through a feeling I get. So I'll realize some, something through my life. I'll realize through the message. I'll get some type of feeling and I base my entire lecture on that feeling. So I'll get that feeling. It's like, oh, this is the feeling I want to convey. And I'll start making parables and stories uh, that would give off this type of feeling, right? I'll come up with points and look through the word and look through Proverbs or whatever it is through Bible verses to show my, my, the feeling I want people to have. So, because what I, I do know is when people learn, listen to lectures, there is something that they're going to take away from it. And some people's lectures are memorable and some people's aren't, right? Like sometimes people remember a lecture because it was too long. So they don't remember the points. They just remember it was too long. Some people say that, oh, it was boring. Some people say this or that, oh, it was a great point, but... One thing I do want to do is I want people to be left with some type of feeling, right? Because that's what people remember. Like I, I, I read in a psychology book uh, before that people's memories are, are uh, what do you, what's that word? They are connected to emotion. And this is why people don't really remember even the things you did last week unless you have a high emotional experience, like high emotion of anger, high emotion of joy, how high emotion of sadness, high emotion of just any type of high emotion, uh, your brain connects that to that memory. And like they think about this too, and this is why when people have trauma, that's the thing that stays with them for the rest of their life because it's a high emotional moment. But if you think about it, in a given week, you're not going to have many high emotional moments. You're going to have like maybe one to two times a week, you may have a high emotional moment. And with these high emotional moments, this is what you're, this is how I realize my things. Like my, my parts of my, uh, parts of what I'm realizing, right? And I, my, my suggestion is, it's very, very difficult to realize in the process because when you have a high emotion, it's hard to be very rational and reasonable. And it's usually after the fact you're realizing what God did for you or you realize what God is trying to tell you. And that's why I always tell people to look back at the high emotion moments in their life and realize from it, right? You don't have to talk about something that just happened right now. You talk about things usually that are highly emotional and you can tell people that story and then on top of it, tell the realization of what God told you through it. And this is where I get a lot of my material, right? So uh, when I find that high emotional moment, I start making parables. I start searching through the Bible, making ver uh, finding verses that connect to it. And uh, it's something that I, I do think that this is one of the things that will help you to uh, bring your lectures to a higher level is bringing in those high emotional moments. Like some people, I've, I've heard some sermons where uh, people don't, like they, they share their experience, but it's not a high enough emotion that they're able to really talk about it in an exciting way. Do you know what I mean? Like when it's high emotion, then you're able to give off that high emotion to people. But if it's mid emotion, what happens is 
People only receive it in a mid-mediocre way. Uh, so one thing I told this person is don't think about trying to conjure up emotions. That's really difficult to do. It's like, oh, if someone says like, I'm not an emotional person, I'm more logical. Yeah, me too. I'm a very logical person. However, I do look for those high emotion moments, which are very rare in my life, like once a week, whatever it is. And I try to realize through those things. And you need to think about what already happened in your life. You don't have to conjure up a new emotion right now. Think about what happened in the past. And, you know, I'll realize something and I'll put that into my lecture. And that's what makes it more practical because it comes from a real life experience. And, uh, you know, if you look at the Revelation lecture, you know, revelation, Revelations, there's three different types of Revelations, right? There's like the supernatural, there's the nature Revelations, and then there's like uh, the daily life or the natural Revelations we go through, right? Supernatural is hearing the voice of God. Supernatural is like dreams and visions uh, or uh, reading the Bible or the Word of God. That's all supernatural stuff. Nature revelations is through nature. You see trees and rocks and plants and animals, like some seem realizing it through ants, right? And we'll get those uh, nature revelations too. And of course, there is the daily life or natural revelations, which is the things you, ex the, uh, the, what you realize through your experience in life. And those are three different ways that we realize that's the way God speaks to us. And that's why if God is speaking to us constantly all the time, we always have to have our ears open. And these will be, uh, this will be the fuel you have to make your uh, lectures even more powerful with daily life, real life experiences. So I was talking to them about that type of stuff. And then we, I thought this one was a really, really important one I think everyone should think about is um, when we're making a decision, right? Making a, uh, a big decision in life. Well, now, what does that mean? Making a big decision in life is, uh, oh God, what direction should I take? Should I... Uh, like, should I take full-time providence or should I go into a job, right? And, you know, the question is, uh, how should I pray to God about this? And a lot of times people come to God and they just say, what should I do, God? What should I do in my life? It's a very general, open statement and... It doesn't, it, it doesn't require you to put much effort in. It's just like, God, what should I do? What should I do, God? And people expect an answer for God from a question like that, which, I, which uh, when you pray, you have to pray better than that. Now, what does that mean? Now, how did I realize about how to pray, right? So uh, it came, you know, as I was growing up as a leader uh, in this history, you know, you write letters to Sun Sim, you asking him for advice. And one of the things that people are telling me is, yeah, you, the answer you get from Sunstein is according to uh, how much effort and how much you put into the question. If you say to Sunstein, like, hey, Sunstein, what should I do? Sunstein doesn't, got, doesn't have an answer for you. He just bring up some stuff that he thinks like, oh, why don't you try this? And then all of a sudden we think to ourselves is, oh, that must be what God says. This is God's word. Oh, I have to go into this. But when you start trying it, you realize it's not something you really like. But then you think to yourself, oh, but this is what Sunseem said. So I have to do this until the end. And the answer is no. You got an answer according to the level of your question. It's far better to ask a question in this way. Oh, you know, I'm thinking about what I should do for my future. And my heart really wants me to do full-time providence. And I know that uh, I am good at this. I am good at this. I'm good at this. But I don't like these types of things either. But maybe I should become a head leader. However, uh, I'm also someone that doesn't like to do this, this, and this. And I was really thinking maybe I should get into this type of job too. My dad wants me to take over his company. You know, yada, yada, yada. Right? And with this type of question, it's way more detailed. He gets an insight of what your life is actually like, and you've put in your responsibility to the max, and you'll get a much better answer. If you just give a general question, God, what should I do? You're going to get a general answer, and it may not even fit you. It's according to your responsibility, right? Think about it. If there's no such thing as responsibility in our, of our prayer, then why should, why do we have to pray for things in the first place? Why would you, you know, why would we even need to ask for things if there's no such thing as responsibility? Then God should just give us the things that we want because, oh, he knows everything in our hearts anyways. But we have to realize it's our responsibility to pray. And it's our responsibility to put in the effort to pray. Why? Because this is not, uh, a, this is not just 
a transactional history. This is not just a God gives you everything history. This is a true love history, which means that lovers discuss. Lovers talk about what's in their heart too. It's not just, God, I'll do whatever you want. What do you want? No, you, it's a discussion. And the answers you get in your prayers is given at the level of how you pray. So when, when, I, you know, when, when I'm going to ask Sun Sim a question, I put it in detail. Because God is a fair and just God. So what kind of answer will God give? Well, if you put in a 25% effort, then you're going to get a 25% answer. It's according to, what you, according to your responsibility. You can't expect God to give you a 100% answer with 50% effort in the request. That's a child level. We are at a level when we pray, the prayer has to be at that level. It's not a general, what should I do? What can I do? It's more of, God, this is what I'm going through right now. This is what I'm feeling at the moment. This is what I'm struggling with. I'm not sure what the best thing for me to do at this point in time. God, what kind of mission do you think is better for me to do at this time? God, do you think I should um, go a different direction? Like these are all different things that, that we have to talk to God in absolute detail and not being afraid to talk about what you want to. Remember, there is that 10%. When it comes to predestination, we have that 10%. And that 10% is our responsibility and fulfill your entire 10%. Do 100% of your 10%. And this is when you're going to get those better answers that you were really looking for. So I really hope that in your prayers... Don't be so general with God because remember, 25% answer gets a 25%, a 25% request gets a 25% answer. Be detailed. Really say what's in your heart. God, like I'll, I'll tell God straight up, man, I don't want to do head leading. Like I really don't. I just had like, this is my experience. This is my character. Uh, this is what I went through. However, I will say to God, if that was just a bad experience because of my level and what I have done wrong, uh, please open my eyes to it again. You know, it may, maybe it was just that experience. My first time, so it's the hardest. I'll do better next time. But God, this is my feeling right now, but you know better than I do. So if you believe that that's something better for me to do that is eventually going to fit and I can fit into that mold, God, for sure, I'll try it again because you know better than I do. I'll try it again. I'm not saying, I'm, you know, I'm saying trying is, will I really be better at this the next time I go through it? I'll try it out if God thinks that that's the best thing to do. Do you know what I mean? So that's what a real discussion with your husband or wife would be like. It would be, right? It wouldn't be, hey, I'm buying a car. It'd be like, honey, what do you think we should do? Uh, what do you think? Do you think we need a new car? And they're, and they're like, oh yeah, I think we need a new car. It doesn't mean I go out and buy a Lamborghini. Then you discuss in detail how much do you think we should spend? What do, you, what do you think we can afford? What do you think the best thing here is? Oh, what do you think the best thing? Oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And when you, when you look at it that way, we realize, oh, okay, right? That's what a true discussion is. And this is when your prayers actually start becoming more deeper and your prayers become longer, right? A lot of times people are like, oh, I don't know how to pray that long. How do you pray for an hour? How do you pray for two hours? How do you pray for th seven hours for those 40 days? There are lots of things to pray about. And if you do it in detail, it changes everything. When you're like, express your heart to God, it changes everything. And some people might ask like, well, you don't hear God. So it's just me talking. And the answer is, hey, how many times have you talked to someone, you talked the entire time, and at the end of it, you felt better at the end, even though they didn't say a single word, right? Yeah, sometimes you talk. But remember, in the Revelations uh, lecture, there are three different ways through the Bible, through the words you hear, the weekly messages, pre-dawn messages, through people, through your nat through nature, through your everyday daily life, you're going to get your answers. All right. So uh, I hope it's something that, you know, we, we have to just build that life uh, and make sure we build it in the proper way. But I hope that helps you guys out too when it comes to our prayer life also. And I think that's a great, uh, it's something that's a good way to kick off our weekend to understand how to pray a lot better than we are now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's get into, since that's done, let's get into our first break of the day.
Let's go. Do. No, I'm not slipping through. No, I'm not falling down. The only thing that's falling is my knees on the floor. I'm praying. Lord, will you give me strength? Lord, will you give me power? I can't do this myself, so bless me in the morning hours. All the demons test me, but they will never shake me. If I pray, they hate me. If I pray, you love me. Uh, connect with you is the only thing that matters. And honestly, I couldn't be happier. While I'm praying on my knees, I trust you with all my heart. For you always come through for myself. For my family, for myself alone, I pray Please don't let me down, Lord I know I can trust you with all my heart So I'm on my knees, praying For you to always come through Even if I pray all night All I want is for your will be done So I'm on my knees, I pray to never just settle for good when great is available Who's the mastermind behind this mind? I give all the credit to God, that's why I'm back They mad that I made it, I know that the sayings they hate it I keep working hard just to make progress Now I'm on 10, trust the process, ayy Look at my efforts lately I'm setting conditions daily I'm praying on my knees, so bless me Please bless me, please bless me Tribulations always come and go I will never stop, just always know Your focus determines reality Stay solid, that's why I'm praying on my knees I trust you with all my heart For you to always come through For myself, for my family On myself alone, I pray Please don't let me down, Lord I know I can trust you with all my heart So I'm on my knees praying For you to always come through Even if I pray all night All I want is for you All right, so let's get into the word study on this wonderful Friday. And of course, uh, every Friday we have the Wednesday message word study. And uh, we had some more Proverbs and we had uh, these four key points that came out. And I hope it's something that all of us uh, have taken into heart. God who makes the right history at the right time from Matthew chapter 16, verse 3. Uh, Point number one, powerful, and we've heard it so many times, but Even though we're reminded of it, how many of us actually take this super seriously? Wake the pre-dawn and pray. If you don't, you will lose the blessing due to your own ignorance. And this is something even for me, like even lately, as of late, I've been having some great night prayers. You know what I mean? Like right before I sleep, I'm just getting some good prayers in. Very, very sincere. Uh, It goes on for like 30 to 40 minutes. And I'm just having that time where I'm in peak. My mind is in that peak moment where I'm like, oh, you know, I I, I can talk about God about certain things. But after listening to the Wednesday message, uh, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you have to you have to realize and recognize there is a peak time. There is a blessing that you're going to receive with that prayer at the pre-dawn. God does everything at the pre-dawn time. God will meet you at the pre-dawn time. So this is a time you need to focus on, right? And uh, I was like, yeah, you know, even just because my prayers at night are doing so well, um, doesn't mean I need to like just focus on like that night prayer. It's got to go towards like, it's got to push myself towards the pre-dawn once again, wake early at the pre-dawn, receive the blessing of prayer, realize the blessings that I've received, right? And uh, this is like, this is something, uh, this one point from that uh, first, that first key point that came out about the pre-dawn was, you will realize only when you try to realize. And that is the thing that kind of kicked off in my head, like new thoughts, like, wait a second, that's so true. Because here I am focusing so much on the the evening prayer and I like it and it's something that's much easier for me. But am I really trying to real? I know that the pre-dawn is powerful and the most important time of the day, but I'm am I trying to realize? Am I really trying to, right? You'll only realize about the pre-dawn when you try to realize. 
And that is something I think a lot of us have to think about to ourselves is, are we trying to realize or has it become just kind of one of those run through the motions moments that we have where we're just doing it because we've realized. No, just because we're told to go to the pre-dawn, right? We're told to pray at pre-dawn and it's like emphasized so much, but how many of us have got to the point when we've realized why the pre-dawn is that big? And that's a bigger question for us to think about too. How many of us have received the blessings from the pre-dawn? Like lately. Of course, in the past, I'm sure many have had those experiences, but those experiences kind of, you lose the feeling as time goes by. But what about right now? Right? Like some of the things that were talked about in the message, like, hey, guess what? Uh, if you go to the pre-dawn, guess what blessings you receive, guys? Uh, instead of going to the, burn, the, the lake of burning fire, uh, we go to heaven. And of course, it's like, that's one of those points which is said so often that sometimes it doesn't hit us as hard as it should. Instead of burning in the lake of fire, we go to heaven. That is a powerful point, isn't it? But we've heard it so many times, it becomes just a normal, natural thing. It's kind of like, like this might sound kind of weird, but it's kind of like the F-bomb. When you know when people swear, the F-bomb comes out and we're like, ooh, you swore, and then you feel really bad that you swore. But if you swear enough, you lose the feeling of the F-bomb. So it's even though it's a serious word, you don't feel it, right? And I think that's what's happening with some of the things in the terms that we hear on do it until the end, the golden city, don't go to the lake of burning fire, eternal joy. Like these are all things, oh, get the blessings of God. And, or like there's one thing that was said in the message like um, be, oh, what is it? Be, oh, you are blessed because oh, you have met the man of mission of this time period in your body. Have we realized what that really means? Have you really realized what that means? Like when I watch TV, some people say, oh, I watched the last show of the Rolling Stones. Oh, I met this famous person before they died. Oh, if I can go back in time just to meet one person, I'd meet John Lennon or the Beatles or Elvis Presley or something along that line. People all say these types of things, right? Because they realize after the fact how valuable a person is, right? And what, the, what accomplishment, accomplishments they've done. The hardest part is to realize while they're living. Right? Realizing while you're in the process and not just after when you regret. And that's one point that was made is uh, in the message that hit hard is people live thinking that, ah, oh, this is just a life of faith. And then they live an ordinary life. Tell me that's, that's true too, especially after the pandemic. People are scrambling to live an ordinary life just to live ordinarily. There's no thanksgiving. There's no joy. The failure to realize, the failure to have true happiness, but we connect it all to physical things that we're not happy unless I have this physical thing. And it's true. Like what, what the message said was when, when the Holy Trinity of Jesus look at that, they're just like, man, that's so pitiful. It's so pitiful. So I, I think that uh, we have to, you know, do like, you know, this is how Sunsi came, Sunsi realized this. He, sometimes you just feel bothered to get up at pre-dawn. But Sunsi's like, you know what? I got to get up. I got to do it. It's my responsibility. And I think that's a really powerful word we have to think about is, are you responsible? Responsibility is regardless of what you feel, regardless of what you think, you do your responsibility, even though it's difficult because it's the thing you should do. And some people might say, well, that's, you know, but what, the, isn't that like fake? And the answer is no, it's not fake. It's even more powerful. It's more powerful when you do something when you don't want to do it because you love this person, right? But you're like, what? But you don't feel it. And I'm going to tell you this. When people get married, they're not going to feel that love all the time because they're going to fight and argue and do crazy things too, right? It's, it's going to happen. Responsibility is do it. That's To have that sense of responsibility, you must love to have that sense of responsibility, and I think it's, I personally think it's more powerful. Even though I don't want to do it, I'll still do it because I love this person. And I think this is a time, you know, like Sansim is, he sees it in the spiritual world that a lot of people are not waking up for the pre dawn. And he's like, Do you have any idea? Did you realize, do you realize how powerful the pre dawn is that the greatest blessing happens at the pre dawn time? 
It is such a tremendous blessing. So I think that's the, one of the big things, right? That's why it's kind of like a conflict and ignorance. Ignorance is you don't know. And for us, we can't even say we don't know because we've heard it like 10,000 times a year, right? We just didn't realize because we didn't try to realize. If we don't know, then when you get blessed, you mistake that blessing as a woe and then you lose that blessing. And I think that's probably happening even now where people think that everything bad that happens is a bad thing and you start blaming God. But sometimes those bad things that happen is a blessing, is not a woe, right? When it comes to business, someone might quit. When it comes to business, one of your, uh, one of the, the investors might be doing, you know, might quit or there might be a new CEO or something along that line, right? We have to be those that realize that, yeah, we have to reach that next level. Right, and we have to be those that understand that. Hey, sometimes pray about it. That you may think it's a mistake, but it's actually a blessing. You may think it's a curse to you, like God, why did this happen? No, it is a blessing. Right, so you know there is that time. Uh, one part of the message that you know that all of us can agree with is, yeah, there's a time for extreme tribulation, and it's extreme tribulation now because it's time. It's 2023. But all you also have to remember. It's also the time you receive the things you deeply long for. And if you just stay angry and upset because of the time we're living in, you're only going to suffer and you're not going to receive anything. You're going to throw that blessing away. So we have to realize even if it's the harshest of harshest tribulations, when the time comes, it finishes and happiness comes. So I hope that all of us will be able to work the pre dawn, right? The second key point was uh, what belongs to God has value of things that belong to God, right? So, you know, it sounds like repetitive or cyclical, but basically like if you're a king, then the things that you have uh, have a value of what a king wants, right? So if you go to a king's palace, all the art there is going to be like millions of dollars. Why? Because it's a king. They'll only have things at the value of a king. So we have to realize not only this creation of the world, whether it's Wang Dong, whether it's, you know, all the different things that we have, we have to realize God only chooses what's at his level. But the most important thing of all the things that God has, it is us. It is the chosen people. And we can lose this choosing, being chosen, if we live life in the wrong way. God has handpicked every person. You may not realize why right now. Because when we look at ourselves right now, we're not really that much to look at. But God doesn't look at us looking only at the present. He looks at the past, your lineage, the people before you. He looks at the present. But most importantly, he looks at the future and says, this is what this person can be. This is why Saul, Saul of Tarsus, who became Apostle Paul, can you imagine what people looked at him when they looked at only the present? The, the disciples and the people, the Christians at that time, were like, how can you choose someone like Paul? He's killing Christians. But God is also looking at the future, what he can be. And he was able to fulfill it. And in the same way too, we may not understand what we're going to be right now. And I'm not saying that you're all going to be pastors or anything else along that line, but even in business, even as a, a family, even as raising children, whatever it is, we all are chosen because we are the best at that thing that's going to happen in the future. I don't know what it is for you. I may know what mine is, but I don't know about you. God, just like Wormwood Donkey, chooses the best place chooses the best rocks, chooses the best trees. It's fitting for who? Fitting for someone of the value of God. And when it comes to people, he doesn't just choose anyone. He chooses people at the very, very best. Right? He chooses at the very, very best. And uh, one of the things that was really telling was, he's like, hey, if you were to ask someone in heaven how great something was, they couldn't even give you a number because it's not calculable in human terms of, of numbers. And all they can say to you, it's worth, worth more than the entire world. That's all they can say. And it's even more than that. Like trillions, quadrillions. You can't even put in a number to it, how, how valuable something is. Right? So we have to realize the value is something that we don't realize yet. Because if we did, we would be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. It's like, it's like having someone just giving you a million dollars. And we, we understand that, 
number is really high. Like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Like if you had a million dollars right now with the, with the uh, inflation, or with, sorry, with interest rates, you put a million dollars in your bank account, you're making like 55,000 US dollars uh, a year. A year, that's what you're making. You don't have to touch the million. You're going to make 55,000 anyways, right? Which is pretty crazy. But, you know, that's the power of having that much money, but which is nothing. Million dollars is nothing, right? To God, to the, to the value that God sees. But if we can understand the value of a million dollars, then we should, when we pray, we try to realize we're going to uh, understand the value of ourselves, about each other, about church, about the word, about sunset, all these other different things. We're going to realize the value of it. So I, I hope it's something that we, we can kind of push to try to realize even more. Uh, what was the third point? The third point was, uh, one second, I have to scroll down because there's a lot of things I'm skipping. Third point is, uh, when the opportunity passes, it does not come again, even after 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 years. And for some, the opportunity is given in the next time period, right? Just like Jesus preached the spirits in prison who died at the time of Noah, they had to wait like, what, 2,500 years before uh, is it 2,500 at the time of Noah's? Yeah, 2,400 years, whatever, before until they can get another opportunity. And it was the next time period. And we have to understand is this opportunity we have, of course, it comes to the ultimate opportunity of coming into the history, believing the one that God has sent. And for those that did not take it, they may not get another chance until after they die. Or uh, sadly, for those who believed and then reject you know, they, they may never get that chance again. So, you know, uh, the times are going to, you know, think about how time is going by so quickly. Eventually, we have to realize that the man of mission is going to die. Right? Like, there's going to be a time where we are preparing for post, you know, after Sun has gone. And that's something that's kind of like, wow, like what, what is that going to be like? And you could kind of already see that we're kind of preparing for it with uh, head leaders preaching a lot more often right now and a lot of responsibility going to the leaders and a lot of decision making coming to the leaders too. So I looked at that as like, ah, you know, that is something that I, uh, you know, it's, it's sad to think about, but we have to be prepared for it too. So like even when, the message talked about if you had a wife and then all of a sudden the wife comes against you and then slanders you. Should you work on them more or wait for another to come? Right? And, you know, it's, it's you know from these this prayer that Sunsim is praying about the situation that happened in March, the, the March Oppenheimer, right? And uh, his God's answer was, I cannot live with someone who is foolish and sprout, sprouts forth evil. And I cannot give eternal blessings to such a person. And I, I found that to be very, uh, it was really sad to hear that because that's kind of like the reality of it. It wasn't a scary thing at all to me. It was just really sad knowing the, the current situation that we're going through right now, right? And we know that if you reject God, then God eventually rejects you. He can't use you in this history if you rejected him. He can only use those that are for him, believe in the one that God has sent. And I think that's something that we have to think about also, right? And the opportunities are going to come not only, like we've come to this history, but the opportunity is going to come up is missions, opportunity to help this history and stuff like that also. So and I listened to that. It was, it, was, it was quite sad for me to hear it in, in that way. And it just shows you how much Sunsim is praying for that full situation right now also. Uh, the last key point, the fourth one was, now is the time when each person should make their faith more beautiful, majestic, and wondrous, right? And uh, this is something we've been hearing for a while, especially during uh, this time of 2023. And of course, as, as much as you have equipped yourself with wisdom and knowledge, then you'll have that much power to do other things, right? And you'll be used in that precious way. If we make ourselves 50%, we'll be used as a 50% person, only whatever a 50% person can do, Right? And I hope that all of us too can really reach that level also where we can help a lot of people in this history and throughout. But yeah, it's uh, it's quite sad. Like, yeah, you know, this is a time that even though it's been difficult with the pandemic and many other things happening, and I'm sure it's a lot easier for introverts, but this is a time we have to make ourselves into that divine level continuously. It's not something that ever stops. And I, I think the point that got to me is 
you'll gain and enjoy as much as you've made yourself, which means that the only person you can blame for your misery and unhappiness is yourself, actually. Because as much as you've made, as much you'll gain as much as you've made yourself. So if you haven't made yourself, then you're going to be unhappy as much as you haven't made yourself. And you will gain and enjoy as much as you've made yourself on this earth. And this is why we have to make ourselves before the time grows old, right? And I look at myself like, dang, I'm like 44. I got to make myself even more before I grow too old, right? I'm healthy right now. I'm working out. I'm doing a bunch of different things. But for what reason? Is it just to enjoy my body in the mirror or something like that? Or is it for me to use for God's history? Make and use yourself before you grow old. Because once that time passes, it can't be undone. You're going to be old and you're old. So I hope that all of us can really like realize what that means for each and every one of us. Look at your age. Look at your time. Don't think that you have plenty of, like the young people think they have plenty of time so they don't work on it. And the old people think that, oh, my time is done. So, you know, I'm not going to work on it either. But no, it's, you'll get according, you'll be used as much as you've done. And that's why when you look in the world too, the mass, like the great experts in the world of whatever field it is, even though they're 80 and 90 are still being used. Sunsim too, he's already 78. He's turning close to 80, but he's still being used even at that age because he's made himself to that point. So I hope that we will make just develop ourselves for 2023 and we'll be those just like how Sunsim is developing what we're doing like crazy, better trees, better rocks, making it more majestic, more major construction, you know? He's always doing it, making it better and better and better. He says, he was 85, I'm going to make it to 100. And we have to look at ourselves too and says, yeah, maybe you're at 80 right now. Let's make it to 85. Let's make it to 90, right? And uh, the one thing I was so thankful for is when, you know, even though Sun seems like, hey, now is a time to make yourself even more beautiful, majestic and wondrous. And then he says, and this is why the Holy Trinity and Jesus will continue to give you the word through the man of mission. So I was like very, very thankful for that. So, you know, let's work on what we have right now already. Make ourselves. A lot of times, uh, like when I see re people with great character, uh, not there's no one that bothers them. They're not bothered by people. They're not bothered like, oh my gosh, like this person said this, this person, oh, I can't stand this person. It's because they made themselves. And I look at them and I, I highly look up to those types of people too. They're not bothered by those things. They're able to work with all people, right? So let's really pray, open our eyes, and find what we must improve each and every day, right? We, we can't be satisfied by living with the past. Like all the things we did in the past, that's the past. What are we going to do right now? All right, so uh, that last story, 40-year-old person, young, and he said 40-year-old young person, so that made me feel really good because that seems like 40-year-old young person. That's half his age, right? Asked me to pray for his body to do well, and he says, I'm only going to pray for the spirit, and you pray for your spirit from now on. And then you hear 20 days later that person died, and he said, always pray for your spirit and save your spirit perfectly. And I was like, sheesh, like that's... That's crazy, right? And it, it kind of brings everything back to perspective. 20, at 40 years old, he dies? Yeah. And uh, it makes me even more thankful that I'm still living right now, even though there's plenty of times I could have. But uh, yeah, uh, powerful uh, Wednesday message. I hope you guys received a lot from that too. And uh, yeah, if you have anything else, go leave in the comments below. Lo lo would love to hear what you guys are thinking also. All right. So there it is, guys. That is uh, today's word study on the Wednesday message. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let's move on to the second break of the day.
Okay, so let's get into uh, the final segment for today and for the entire weekend. We have Until the End. It is a mental health podcast by Daniel Baker over there in Korea, just 19 years old, doing a great job each and every week. And today, he wanted to talk about how to change your subconscious or unconscious mind through auto-suggestion and affirmations. And he said that this is something that he's been doing that really helped him improve his uh, improve his mental health. So uh, this is right after COVID too. So I hope it's something that all of us can really gain from. Everyone, please welcome all the way uh, from Korea. This is Daniel Baker with Until the End. Everyone, welcome back to the Do It Until the End podcast. Now, 
I want to welcome everyone who's listening on the MSD 117.8 podcast. And I really want everyone to really think about their mental health. So that's why I'm doing this podcast. And I just wanted to remind you, like, um, I really want to improve my life. And the findings I have and the things that I share is something that you know, I might not 100% put into my life, but I try to. And uh, a lot of them, you know, I tend to do for uh, make it into good habits. But some of them, you know, it's not just for me. So uh, this is some today's podcast episode is something that I, to be honest, has been a weak spot for me since the pandemic. And I really want to say that um, the pandemic was very bad for me. And it, f- like many people my age, it really destroyed uh, a lot of my relationships that I had with my friends. So nine months inside of your house, house at least for Korea, was terrible. And for my mental health, for my rela- relationships, uh, it was really bad. But one of the worst things that came out of COVID um, or the lockdowns was the fact that I was watching too much media, right? And when you're watching too much media, and as I said in the past couple episodes, the more you watch or the more things you see, uh, that's uh, your thoughts follow those paths right and when you watch a lot of media for long periods of times which means uh, which is what happened when I was in lockdown uh, you tend to follow your thoughts tend to follow those the things you watch and I'm going to be perfectly honest it wasn't the most clean stuff it was a lot of cussing it was a lot of um, uh, animations and uh there's a lot of dark stuff that I was watching, uh, a lot of horror aspects, and uh, I would say it wasn't, it was not good for my mental health, especially my unconscious mind, and my unconscious got so bad that, you know, I was talking with my mother, and one of the worst, or uh, or one of the things that she said I needed to improve was, uh, she said. Recently, since the COVID years, since four, five, maybe even before that, my, she saw that, you know, my words and how I spoke through that, uh, through my words and uh, through talking uh, with me for over long periods of times, uh, she realized that m- my thoughts has been really negative. Um, not towards other people because you know other people you know at least i'm i'm friendly to most people even to more towards my family but i was having really bad unconscious thoughts toward myself towards myself and this when i talked with her i was like yeah you know at first i was like no you know I have a perfect relationship with myself, but that wasn't the case. And over the COVID era, era and over uh, long periods of times of watching media, my unconscious got so out of control where wherever I go, I would see negative or have these negative thoughts. And when you have these negative thoughts, and especially the ones that I had where... Um, about just random works i you know whatever i did you know i had these negative thoughts like i can't do this Uh, i'm too stressed uh he's better he's better at this job anyways why am i even doing it like these thoughts popped up into my head and yeah it was very very bad you know at first it was you know of course it was very mild but as the years got on you know, I needed to change. And one of the only ways you can change is to make sure that during your free time or during 
um, your during your free time and during the you need to consciously try to change your unconscious and one of the best ways to do this um i i did a little research is to use something called auto auto suggestion yeah and another word for this is called daily affirmations now affirmations are very interesting because it's a lot it's it's a massive topic in the self improvement community uh, however it's it's constantly making yourself think in a positive way now what does this mean uh you're changing your unconscious thoughts you're changing your negative thoughts and replacing it with positive thoughts now how do you do this now if you go onto youtube uh and type daily affirmations then you'll you'll uh go across these one hour 30 minute videos on uh affirmations and what are affirmations affirmations are statements that uh you, you either read to yourself or you listen to which it's not i wouldn't say it's true right it's not true right now but it's kind of saying now, it's not true right now, but in the future, I'm going to make it true, right? And that's how you change your unconscious mind, right? As I said, uh, your thoughts uh, tend to sway towards the things that you see the most. So if you're, um, it's kind of like a battle, right? If you're watching more media or if you're um, listening to the word and reading the word more you'll uh sway towards those uh opposite ways right so just as the same thing using affirmations you're able to um, change your thoughts change your unconscious thoughts that uh, for me to be honest has become very bad and become very negative and i've been doing this for two weeks uh where I like to do it where I'm half asleep. So when I'm half asleep, I listen to it uh, because when you're 100% awake and 100% alert, you know, you listen to these statements, I am very rich. And you're like, really? I'm not very rich right now. I have a couple thousand dollars in the bank, but that doesn't mean I'm rich, right? And you think about that when you're 100% awake. However, when you're sleeping or you're half asleep, you listen to that and your unconscious mind starts to change now to be honest uh, this is a really good way to make sure that you have positive thoughts and it's it's something that i've implemented and got a lot of good results uh, you know i whenever i listen to it during uh when i'm you know showering or i have these three times uh it really gives me a lot of strength and it gives me a lot of determination throughout the day to do the work that I need to do and yeah um so that's how I tr try to you know change my unconscious thoughts now so that's what I really recommend to people who really want to improve the daily thoughts that they have uh, look up affirmations and really make sure nailing in your affirmations now the amazing thing about this week's Wednesday message uh, that it just shocked me when I listened to it because it's so it's I, I love this self-improvement journey that I'm going on and uh, you know it's difficult uh, especially some aspects but this Wednesday message there was an amazing proverb where Sanzim said basically basically said that if you don't think if you think that you're perfect and if you think that you don't have to change god won't or you won't be able to see what you need to change what well, does that make sense of course um if you kind of block yourself off from being too per uh, or or if you block yourself off from changing and improving your life then you're not going to be able to see the ways you're going to improve and the your, this aspect i need to improve so you have to constantly ask god and pray to god 
asking what kind of aspect of my life should I change right now? And through people or through the message,、uh, I truly believe. Just like I, I realized that I need to change my unconscious thoughts,、uh, that God will make you realize through people, through the word,、uh, through inspiration,、uh, and there's a lot of ways that、uh, He'll make you realize. So I truly,、uh, I'll pray for you guys, and I hope you guys pray for me, of course, in my、uh, self improvement journey,、uh, that we can all realize the things or the aspects of our lives we need to improve. Uh, especially because a lot of us right now are getting ready for、um, getting ready f- for marriage, and、um, you know, both we we really need to improve our spiritual and physical lives. So I truly believe that we need to improve,、uh, and it's it's unlimited, right? The things that we need to improve. So yeah, let's work hard and work really well together, so we can improve our lives. And I truly thank everyone for listening、uh, to this podcast episode, and to everyone who goes until the end. Let's walk this path together. Peace out, guys. Bye bye. And thank you so much, Daniel, for a wonderful podcast once once again. Until the end, about suggestions,、uh, affirmations, and I hope that you guys can use this skill too to help you guys out through those dark times that you go through.、Uh, I hope that everyone has an amazing and awesome weekend.、Uh, this is,、uh, yeah, we're getting to the last week of. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be what one and a half weeks left because there's nine days. One and a half weeks left, and we're already into August, which. Is nuts. So I was just like, man, that's so crazy that we're going to be going through this. But I'm super grateful, super thankful, and I hope that everyone will really have、uh, an amazing weekend.、Uh, make sure that、uh, you know, tell me how it goes and what what things you have going on in the weekend too. Would love to hear it. Everyone have an amazing and awesome day, and we'll see you guys again on Monday on the Morning Star Drive on one one seven point eight. The morning star drive one one seven point eight. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly, so let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like.